What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 398th episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I am your host, SBJ. Very tired. Just got off a flight. Hopefully not Jet sick. setting. I thought, no, it wasn't the jet set. It was only like a two-hour flight. It's just the no sleep before the flight. You were That's, on a jet. Yeah. You're a member of the set of people who were on a jet. You're a jet setter. You were setter. jet setting. Oh. You were jet setting across the country, visiting places, not going to PAX. Where do you think that term came from? I th- No, jet lag is because the time difference makes you Nobody sleepy. said no, jet, jet lag, lag. buddy. Oh, okay. We said, said jet, jet set. Setting. Jet You're set. Jet set. Radio Will is here. <laughs> And I just have one uh, request slash announcement to make. Announcement, it is uh, March 1st. Uh, it is no longer Pokemon Day. Would all the party hat Pikachus and party hat Eevees please go home? Please. Let the other Pokemon back in the room. We're back to normal time. Pokemon Day is over. I had shroomish to come back. I can't even remember look, what spawns look, in my house. I, I <laughs> was at brunch this morning with my mm-hmm. dear friend Greg, yep. his husband, yep. your wife, yep. and Katie. And I'm sitting there because we had a 25 wait for brunch because welcome to Minnesota. And I couldn't catch any more Pokemon in Pokemon Go because my box was full because let's not rant about how I pay for a service I can't put the Pokemon into. That's for a later time. And I like <laughs> literally standing there next to Greg and I have... Literally 400 Pikachu in different hats. Dump them. I was and telling you then to dump like, them. I'll tell you now so to dump them. It so much work. I don't have five years of my life to get rid of hat Pikachus. I'd rather delete the app and start a new account. Oh, <laughs> Why are you catching them? I don't pay attention when I catch my little Pokeball <laughs> Plus does all the catching for me. I don't know what's going on. I just look later and I'm like, oh, Boy, oh boy. That's that passive Pokemon Go life. That's that's the Will Anderson way. Look, dudes, Pokemon Day is over. Party's over. Go home. Get some sleep. I think Let's they, see you next year. I think they leave tomorrow morning. By the time this podcast comes up, they should be okay. mostly gone everywhere. Greg, you're also here. I am also here. It is good that we're recording later because at said brunch, I had a sugar bomb for breakfast. It was beautiful and amazing. It was beautiful and amazing. And then I promptly sugar crashed. For an hour and a half at two. Jeez. Where I was like, I'm just going to sit down. Like, I'm just going to sit here and pet my dog. And then I went. <laughs> I went straight to the gym and lifted for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, well, but what was amazing have... was Greg's dish. It came to the table and it was still moving. Yeah. And you could sit there and watch and it. And then it move. slowly deflated in on itself. It's glorious. I love that dish, but man, I forgot how sugary it is. All right, well, we got a sugary show for you guys. We got a lot of Yay. got a lot to get through. It was Pokemon Day. Uh, I just got. I literally got off the plane from Pax a couple hours ago. I am very tired. Jet but setting. I did not want to put Greg and Will in charge of the episode after Pokemon Day. Do you hear, oh do you hear this? Like your it. most no, 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 popular no, 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 shows. Not. Your most popular shows when it's just the two of us. That's probably that's you're prob- not here. <laughs> that's probably accurate. That's like, you know, you know, Santa not coming for Christmas. I gotta be here for Pokemon Day. News. But, <laughs> you know, I, and I was actually <laughs> thinking of this recently because uh because I was thinking of all the haters. And do you remember, <laughs> Greg, there yes. was an episode that you and I did together. I think was it Bobby that we had or yeah and we went through the map of Galar like it was like our treasure trove of joy and yeah yeah anticipation it was when I was on my honeymoon yeah so all y'all haters go back to episode whatever that was and you'll understand what life is like sure before (laughs) before we get into our show Uh, Speaking of, you know, older episodes, newer episodes, uh, we are very, very close to episode 400. It's around the corner, because isn't this, what, 398? Yes. Yeah, so it's about two weeks away, so we're going to do two things. Uh, One thing is we will be doing a bunch of uh, listener... I don't want to say email, because I'm I'm not telling people to email in. Uh, But this uh, podcast has been going up on YouTube... Uh, so that will be one way if you want to ask a question or hang out. 
You can just ask in the uh, comments below on YouTube what your question is, Pokemon or non-Pokemon related. Obviously, we probably won't be able to get to every question on our 400th episode. And then another way is going to be through uh, Reddit. When the episode goes up, you if you go to our, sub, our subreddit, which is r slash super effective, you'll be able to leave a question there. Um, and then next week, we will have a Google voice number set up. So if... Uh, and the reason we're not doing it this week is because people are super forgetful, and they when I say there's only a week left to do it, there's more they're more likely to do it. So the Google Voice, if you want to leave a voicemail, that will go up next week. Episode will tell you what the number is and stuff. So you have a bunch of different ways. Obviously, if you're in Slack, we'll have a we'll have questions there. So episode 400 is going to be very question community focused from you guys. Questions about. Uh, Galar or older Pokemon games or uh, whether what makes a chair a chair so you can no. ask <laughs> denied ask, ask away for that and we got a loaded show so we have uh, the top 10 Pokemon we have the new mythical that was revealed we had a Mewtwo event in Sword and Shield we have the most packed month in Pokemon Go if you thought February was packed strap on in for March uh, and we got some new Pokemon Center stuff, so we're going to try to get through all of that. And Masters. Oh, yeah, and Masters. Sorry, I do have the Masters tab up. I do have that up. Let's jump into things. And let's let's actually start with the Mewtwo stuff. Uh, let's start there. Uh, the, mo- the movie came out on Netflix on, on Thursday, Pokemon Day. I have not seen it yet, because I've been traveling all either. weekend. So uh, I know Irene and I will be doing a... Patreon exclusive anime episode for the Mewtwo movie. Probably not, you know, this week, but probably next week, just because I set aside two hours to watch this. I can't, I forgot this movie's like a hundred and, like, it's like an hour and 40 minutes long. It's a very, it's it's longer than it should be. But maybe I'm misremembering it. I remember it. Gee, it's not even that long. It's it's slightly over an hour and a half. That's like three episodes of the anime. Yeah, but there's like... At least 30 minutes of that you can cut. Well, there's 30 minutes of everything you can cut. There's 30 minutes of this show we could always cut, and we don't. <laughs> oh, no, 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 so, I do. Don't basically get me Basically all the parts where Steve is talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that came out, and then Armored Me 2 came back to raids in Pokemon Go, and uh, they decided to put Dynamax forms of Mewtwo, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Charmander, Charmeleon, Squirtle, and Wartortle in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield Max Raid Battles. And this will this will definitely be over by the time this podcast up, when goes up, but it was from uh, February twenty sixth in the evening, and then it ended March first, and it, they appeared all throughout the wild area. I think each of these Pokemon had like a ten percent chance to spawn. They finally did something to in a main series video game on Pokemon Day. There was that one weird Pokemon Day where they gave us hidden ability starters like two weeks after Pokemon Day through Pokemon Bank. Yes. Which I still probably assume that those were meant for Pokemon Day, but probably had technical issues. Uh, We didn't get just a downloadable Pokemon, which I still think is something they kind of should do. Um, But this was cool. Uh, This was like, I I would probably argue this was one of the better Pokemon Days um, content-wise across their multiple platforms that... The Pokemon company likes to dominate. Did you guys Mewtwo raid it up? Oh. I did. My word. I did, did, I did, I did. (laughs) We certainly did. Although, I still don't think I've ever defeated a special focused one. Although, I've defeated defeated Mewtwo four times, and I have lost track of which ones I fought. But I want to say, for sure, three of them were the physical attacker. Um, How can you tell the difference? Uh, whether it used Earthquake or... Psy uh, Strike. Psy Strike. Oh. Uh, or Blizzard, I think. Yeah, Blizzard would have been the special. Yeah. Because the night that you and I tried to do it, it was like Blizzard, Hail, Blizzard, yeah. whatever. That Blizzard was the special the one. The special um, one was definitely harder. And I think the special one starts with shields. Yes. At least all the special ones that I ran into started with shields, and all the physical ones didn't. So, trying to think about that, I think I did defeat one special one. But that was rough. Well, Fun, I have, yeah, rough. I have a level 100 Scorch and uh, I think I have a level 100 Grimmsnarl now trying to 
<laughs> get that dude with no luck. If you missed, if you missed the Mewtwo stuff, you couldn't catch it. So I, nope. I think some people were really bummed about that. Although, because of how hard it was, I feel like they could have made it catchable. Because I don't think you could have just grinded out. No, Mewtwo I don't think after Mewtwo. Because well, even if you have a strategy, there's still there's still definitely some RNG to it of like, oh, well, I guess Mewtwo just decided yeah. to use all four moves on one person. Right. And there's no way, no matter how many shields and whatever, you're going to be able to survive just four attacks straight. I, I will say, though, much like most MMOs, like the first day, everybody has no idea what to do in the dungeon. Yeah. Yesterday, last night, when I went in there, like literally went in and picked one up, and the ones to use on Mewtwo, everybody brought one. Like nobody hit OK until they saw what everybody had selected, and they wouldn't change. Like by the end of the weekend, everybody knew what the strat was. Yeah. Uh, even with random people, so it was sort of interesting how raidy that really felt. Like how it compared to Final Fantasy XIV, because. Final Fantasy fourteen also had a patch, and that first day of doing those dungeons when nobody knew anything was a nightmare, and then three days later, you're just flying through it. And that's how I felt this was. That first day was exciting and hard and frustrating, but last night, I'm like, oh, I'll just throw one up, and literally everybody knows what to bring, and they all brought the right ones, and we cleared it no problem. I think it was like frustrating in a good way, frustrating in a way of like failing a dungeon or a boss in Final right. Fantasy fourteen and being like, don't worry, we'll just do it again. We're getting better every time. Right. We're figuring out what it does and how to tell which is which and what does, like, should I throw up a light screen? Should I throw up a reflect? Like, light screen and reflect were absolutely necessary. Yes. And this is how you can tell I don't play MMOs because <laughs> I was just, well, let's put it this way. I was in the woods on Wednesday night and uh, by Thursday I was over it. So <laughs> I was like, mm, I, I could live without the new two. So like a five star raid in Sword and Shield, uh, those Pokemon are usually around level 60. And then if it was yeah. a G Max Pokemon, like G Max Toxtricity, uh, for example, that the five star that would be closer to level 70. Uh, this Mewtwo was level 100, uh, and it definitely did punish you if you brought a weaker Pokemon. Yep, it absolutely did. Uh, it had extremely good type coverage, uh, so it could handle super effective hit quite a few different Pokemon. Uh, and there were Pokemon that definitely stood out that were quickly realized that were better than other Pokemon to use. Surprisingly, Eternit Eternatus, Zacian... And Zamazenta, at least for for the dozens of Mewtwo's I did, were were not one of the like the top ones to pick. Yeah, they weren't. I had I had good success with Dragapult if I didn't bring my Grimmsnarl. Oh, I never. I had really good success with uh, Golisopod because Mewtwo didn't hit weakness on Golisopod at all, and I and it was also so I ran Golisopod with um, Assault Vest. Mm. Oh, the held items. Dragon, that would have been yeah. useful. Yeah. Held items helped a lot. Held items helped a lot, especially if you never, if you weren't a Pokemon that like set up support items or healed, uh, Assault Fest was a really good one, especially yep. against the, the specially, special attacking Mewtwo. And Dragapult was so fast that I could get a uh, dark move off, and I could also do Phantom Force, which means I would disappear for a round, which helped mitigate damage while coming back and being able to do super effective damage. So there's a couple of things like planning that out worked really well, but I will say Dragapult was harder to use than the others. I usually just brought Grimmsnarl because I had T-Wave both um, screens and then the one dark type move. And it was Prankster, so. So here's a question. Do moves like Faint that get past uh, Protect and stuff like that? I think Faint is the one that gets past yep. Protect. I think Phantom Force also gets past Protect. Do they get past the shields? Nope. Or no? Okay. No. They they do what all super effective moves do. They'll knock down one shield and sometimes damage behind the shield. I was doing damage, like breaking a shield and doing some damage as well, but not not the same as if it was bypassing, no. Hmm. I thought the reward items were great. I thought it was worth the trouble doing it, in my opinion. Uh, you could get uh, rare candy, uh, large candy, usually that came in like 10 to 20, extra large candy, which again came in 10 to 20, bottle caps, uh, and then some other items. But the important thing that, I mean, some people might care about was ability capsules. 
Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't think I was going to get ability capsules. Like, I wasn't aware that was a gift. I'm like, I got one. I'm like, oh, sweet. Yeah, not all Mewtwo's dropped ability capsules. I think I ended up beating, um, like, a closer to 15 Mewtwo's. And I walked away with eight or nine ability capsules. And if you do the math on that real quick, that's, you know, 400 to 450 battle points. Those ability capsules would have equaled. Yeah. And so that, to me, like, like once... To, like it took me three hours to beat my first Mewtwo, and it was you know I was writing with people in uh on my Twitch channel, and some were getting frustrated and dropping out. Some people were like, "Hey, I'm gonna need some time to you know pick a Pokemon, level it up. Yeah, I'm gonna like sit back and watch." So it was like rotating through people and understanding what worked, what didn't work, um, figuring out oh there's different M- Mewtwo's and they know these moves or this moves. Um, but once you got it down and once you had a competent team. Uh, it would only take like one or two tries to get through Mewtwo if yeah. everyone knew what they were doing, unless you got the bad luck of like Mewtwo just single targeting, you know, Which one person. Which did happen. And like, that was hard to that was hard to get around, but you had no choice. Like you didn't know. It was like one one of mine. It did brick break to break all the shields and then hit me with three moves, and I'm like, well, <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, it doesn't really matter how bulky you are. It usually would have killed you. I thought it was great, though. I thought it was fantastic. I want to see more of this, and uh, I think the difficulty-to-reward ratio was perfect. I think the standout Pokemon in all of the raids, uh, which reminded me of a very big Destiny thing. Will would know exactly what I'm talking about. In Crota's End, which is a raid in the first Destiny game, people would people would only invite you if you told them you had Gallarhorn. Gallarhorn. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> if you were trying to get into a Crota's End raid and you were like, hey, I got Gallarhorn, people would be like, oh, you're in. That's what we want. We want as many Gallarhorns as possible. And in Mewtwo, I felt like if you had a Marshadow... You were in. You were in. Like, we, we need... We're looking for one Marsh... Well, you... And you only need one Marshadow. Two would have been not great, in my opinion, but... If you had that one Marshadow, you were in. Like, oh, we got we got a gr- everyone had a Grim Snarl. Everyone had like a Lapras. I thought Jellicent was doing pretty good, but uh, it was always like, who ha- who has a Marshadow? Who has a Marshadow? We need one. Hey, looking for one Marshadow. <laughs> I think it was Sam who we were raiding with who got his he, like he invested to get his Jellicent up, and that thing still got destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man, Lapras was good and bulky. Uh, I did it without Marshadow. Sub subbing in Dragapult, uh, with the understanding that a person brought in something with Taunt, because Taunt yeah stopped the stat increases that Marshadow was stealing. So there were a couple of ways around it, but having Marshadow was definitely easier. Which is I'm still a little weird about that. So for those that don't know, Marshadow the Marshadow actually had the easiest strat. You just came in and you did one single move, and it's Marshadow's signature move, which is called Spectral Thief. And usually, um, so this is what I was a little bit confused about, why Marshadows worked and no one else's did. Like, let's say you had a G-Max Lapras, and G-Max's, G-Max Lapras's uh, G-Max move, signature move, is, is like G-Max r- resistance or something. But what it does is it does ice damage, and then it sets up both light screen and reflect. Uh, but if you did that G-Max move when Mewtwo had shields up, it would not do the secondary effect. Same like if, Mewtwo has shields up, you can't paralyze it, you can't put it to sleep, you can't taunt it when it has shields up. For well, that's s- like if you use a Dynamax move and the the Pokemon has shields up, you don't ever get the field effect, right? which is the secondary effect. But Marshadow's secondary effect worked with shields up, which was kind of weird. Yeah. And what it did, for those that don't know, so like if Mewtwo did Nasty Plot, which would increase its special attack by two, and then it did Nasty Plot again, so now it's plus four... Uh, special attack when Marshadow connects and does its move it steals all the buffs that Mewtwo would have so it would steal the plus four so Mewtwo would be back down to normal zero but then Marshadow would have the plus four and then do its attack afterwards and maybe that's why it gets through because it does this the first thing first and then it does the damage um, but it, it's a signature move of Marshadow. So if Mewtwo was, you know, plus two special defense, plus two special attack, Marshadow would steal that for itself, which is very beneficial to the entire team because once Mewtwo had a plus two or plus four, it was getting almost to the point it where was, it would one shot yeah. anything. 
Yeah, my suspicion is it's, it's because it wasn't a Dynamax move, and it's only the Dynamax moves that don't get their secondary effects. Possibly? Maybe? Possibly. Also, I, I, I just feel like maybe they just said, you know what, if you happen to have a Marshadow, <laughs> just let it, like, just let it work. You know, I think there's a lot of what, there's a lot of signature moves that are brand new that weren't included when they did the base game that they're just like, you know what, it's fine. Not a ton of people have it. And sure, just let it happen. They're not, not going to go in and fix it. Not for a one-off raid event. This Mewtwo makes me excited for the raids in the DLC. Yeah. I think if you're going to make something difficult, and we know that some Pokemon fans have been asking for difficulty for <laughs> years, uh, and, you know, if you're going to make a trainer fail and make, like, let me back up, scratch all that. <laughs> when they showed Max raids for the first time, I was hoping it would be like what Mewtwo was. I was hoping mm. that every person brought a Pokemon because that Pokemon mattered to that fight and not, well, every single three star, well, with the exception of some five stars, every three star and four star raid is just people flexing their shinies. Um, and, it, and it can be, and that's fine. Like those, those are no, it's not, not. You're banned. <laughs> those You're are banned. not. Hey, those are not five star raids. Some of us only flex our shinies when it's appropriate for that raid. Thank you very much. Like me. Like for example, I like when when Mewtwo was relatively new. We were like two hours into Mewtwo. I've already failed it three times, and then somebody uh, somebody wanted to join the raid, and they joined with a level one hundred shiny Sinistee. And they locked in, and they didn't ask any questions. They just were like, "Oh, Steve has an open spot. I'm joining. I want to flex." And I was like, oh. "Like I like it's rude to say, but I was like, oh, we instantly lost. Like we cannot win now because right. you br- you locked in the Sinistee. And they were like, "Well, it's level 100." And I was like, "Look, we I've been Don't doing matter. this. For, I was doing this for like an hour and a half. I I get you just got here, but and then they were upset at the end of it that it was too hard." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I don't know what to tell you, like." You brought the wrong Pokemon, bud. Yeah. But there was can't. never that expectation before, right? Because you could right. beat a G-Max, you know, level 70 Toxtricity with a, you know, level 100 Sinistee. Oh, tr- trust. I've got about eight G-Max <laughs> Toxtricities if anybody wants one. Oof. I have a lot. So anyways, I just, it it really, really hit that like Final Fantasy, Destiny really hit that feeling. Strong mmo feel and i can't wait for mmo dungeons to happen in the second you're gonna be pack. disappointed when Will it's we just get one hallway we... greg no well, they're saving the mmo dungeons for pokemon mystery dungeon which is coming out this friday i was I, very no, excited I'm not getting it though i was remembering for the first time remember how excited we were when they showed uh the place where uh the ultra ultra recon squad headquarters and at the top was when you like fight Ultra Necrozma, but when you yeah. get there, it's li- it's not even a hallway; it's yeah. just like an open square, it's, and then yeah. you can't yeah. do anything but go up an elevator. That's my expectations are that for the <laughs> co op dungeons that you go into for the dens, like oh, it's just a hallway, and then when you get well, to the end, I mean, it could be a winding hallway like Ultra Wormholes were, as long as it's not the, of- the cave thing in X and Y. Cave thing in X and Y. Where, like, you're walking, like, you kind of have that Crash Bandicoot view, oh, and the, then you're, like, turning yeah, yeah. it. Like, that was not... Too, I, I'm glad they well, tried I, it, but it, it wasn't fun. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do that with if you're co op with four people. Yeah, I don't... You know? I don't know. I just... I was really happy with it's the a long stuff. Way yeah. away. Uh, the other cool thing that they did was the Bulbasaur and Ivysaur had a chance of dropping Toxic Orb. The Charmeleon yep. and Charmander had a drop of, chance of dropping Flame Orb, and the Squirtle yep. and the War Turtle had a chance of dropping Life Orb. Flame Orb, very sought after. People were trading a Master Ball for a Flame Orb because those people com- cared about competitive. They didn't care about you know <laughs> saving their Master Ball for some shiny or anything, which is understandable. And I think that was yep. always a fair trade. Um, although the fact that Flame Orb was all already ridiculous to get in the first place was kind of weird because they knew yeah. how that item is very valuable to competitive. Uh, but again, I think that is a good reward forces. Like the rewards were so good that if you haven't played in a month, I felt like this was the thing to come back to. You might not care about toxicity. You maybe didn't care about milsery, but if you were, if you were missing key items, if you were 
wanting to get hidden ability starter Pokemon, if you wanted, and to, I did, and if you wanted to try to challenge me too, I thought I thought this was the best like four days that they did raid wise. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, I wish I had known about the starter Pokemon because I actually when I got up this morning I saw that Micah was uh, doing raids and I saw that he was doing like Bulbasaur and all that biz. I couldn't get in on them because they filled up too fast. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. They're doing the starters. And I didn't realize that they were really good starters. Yeah. Well, yeah. you don't always get the hidden ability ones. Again, it's hit or miss. But yeah. I did manage to get all the hidden ability ones. And I managed to get each starter in a luxury ball so I can breed them in luxury balls. And I'm very happy about that. Speaking of luxury, though. Uh, part of the whole Pokemon Day thing was uh, the Pokemon Center would be getting some new stuff. And it's just a lot of wallets, ties, tie bars. Okay. That was a little, little disappointing. It's, a little, it's also disappointing that the bow ties, the bow ties, the bow ties are not real bow ties. Oh, really? They're, they are. Well, they're pre-tied. Oh, they're, they're pre-tied. They're pre-tied clips, which is like, you give us Look, they know their actual audience. tie ties. It's not that one of the, one, one of them could be an actual bow tie. Just one. It's not that hard. I did it for, what, seven people at your wedding. Pokemon Center, a little disappointing. Not too much stuff. I don't want to pay 13 bucks for a pair of socks. They're cute socks, though. Yeah. Are they Bombas? I mean, no, nah, they're whatever no. brand the Pokemon. I don't think their socks are the best quality for 13 bucks. Socks. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of more Ditto stuff, but that was added kind of last week. Ditto Mew. I wonder if they had more planned. I was actually expecting like more Galar plushes, but nope. Well, they they did have free shipping, so yeah. Well, it's yeah, but they always have fifty. Yeah, that was that was a thing. That's true. They had free shipping on Pokemon Day, but they always have free shipping for fifty dollars or more, and it's really easy to get to fifty bucks. They have the weird sleeping in deluxe slide pin. That thing's going to break in two minutes. Sleeping Deluxe Slide Pin? Yeah, those leaping words don't make any luck. sense. Oh, oh leaping. S- leaping I heard into luck. Sliding Celebrations Pokemon Pin, which will break in about a minute. Yeah, maybe. N- not maybe. You know it will. <laughs> I'm not a, it's $10. I'm not a huge pin person. Slide that Pikachu into Meowth and snap it right off. Let's take a break. Uh, we got all the Sword and Shield stuff out of the way. So we got uh, Mythical, we got Masters, we got Go, and we got the Pokemon of the Year kind of stuff. So we will be right back. Hello, it's the beginning of the month, which means I remind, remind, or maybe I'll let you, you could be a new listener. I let you know that we have a Patreon that you can support uh, patreon.com slash it's super effective or way easier to remember ise dot cash podcasting is my full-time job i'm very dedicated to making sure that you guys get quality episodes every monday quality episodes of uh people debating about pocket monsters if you're interested if you like the show if you want to support uh, you can head over to our Patreon to support. At the $2 level, you get access to our Slack community, with ha- which has a bunch of very awesome people that are doing sword and shield raids, trading, debating about cats. Uh, there's like a cooking channel that people talk about their, their healthy living food that I don't eat because I'm a terrible person. But the, but the couple bucks a month goes a long way into doing what I do full time. I know every podcast under the sun has a Patreon, and I try not to bring it up every single episode because I, as a, a podcast listener, know that can get a little obnoxious, and so I try to do it at the start of the month so you get your full value worth of your, your $2. If you want to bump up to like a $5 level, you get access to my anime podcast where my wife and I talk about different Pokemon anime. We are covering Twilight Wings, and we will be doing the, the new Mewtwo movie that is on Netflix very soon that will appear on the feed 
And if you care about physical stuff, at the $16 a month level, you get seasonal postcards. The $25 a month level, you get a cool mug uh, if you want to support. But regardless, I hope you're enjoying the episode. I thought this was a good one. Patreon.com slash It's Super Effective or I-S-E dot cash. Thank you for listening. Thank you if you're supporting. Thank you for just listening. And enjoy the rest of the episode. This is off Pokemon.com. Cygna Suit Red and Charizard. Cygna Suit Eliza and Rotom. And Battle Villa debut during the six-month celebration anniversary of Pokemon Masters. Full disclosure, I am partnered <laughs> with DNA. Full disclosure, I am not. Neither am I. Red is finally here. Yep. With Charizard. And <gasps> Scandal. Red speaks. Wait, he does? Well, don't spoil it for me. Wait, all I've seen is dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, no. You have Ruined. to find it. You have to find it. For those that don't play Pokemon Masters, Greg, what does Cygna Suit mean? Because they say Cygna Wait. Suit Red and Cygna Suit Eliza. I do play Pokemon Masters, and I don't know what a Cygna Suit is. And it's spelled S-Y-G-N-A. Yes. I don't know. I don't know why they pick Cygna. I don't know if that's supposed to mean something. But anyways, so they have their regular in-game outfits, and then they have their Pokemon Masters outfit, which is called Cygna Suit. And if they explained why they picked Cygna Suit somewhere, I missed it. But like at some point, um, Brock changes outfits, and he's, I'm in my Cygna Suit. This is my souped-up super powered outfit i'm more angry or excited or whatever in this outfit so it's basically their shorthand for not holiday tied alternate clothing off pokemon.com real quick the hero of pokemon red and blue is joining the playable cast of pokemon masters alongside his iconic partner charizard the sync pair is just as powerful as you expect uh charizard will mega evolve into mega charizard x uh, plus, Cygna Suit Red and Charizard's Sync Grid is already expanded, so be sure to earn some orbs to make them more powerful. You will be able to scout, which is pull, Cygna Suit Red and Charizard for a limited time during the Poke Fair Scout, available March until March 15th, so you have plenty of time. We, yep. uh, Greg and I were just talking during the break. Uh, Steven Stone is also available to the 16th, so if you haven't pulled Steven yet or you want to pull Steven, you, you got plenty of time still. Uh, and then they introduced the Battle Villa, which is a single-player gauntlet feature that allows uh, many different sync pairs to shine. Each Battle Villa challenge period lasts for two weeks. Each day, you'll be able to create a team of nine sync pairs and see how far you can progress. Each battle will still be on the three-on-three -three format, but HP, MP, and status conditions carry over for each battle. Oh, that actually sounds cool. Yeah, it's it's... Fun and surprisingly hard. Um, <laughs> it's, it's. Um, this might be the first time, Greg. You've said this is fun. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's actually like a it, it's actually a puzzle. You sort of have to look ahead and decide who am I bringing to try to get through the gauntlet. When should I heal? Should like at low levels is even use using my moves because you run out of PP. Like your speed ups, your stat boosts. If you use one of them, they're gone. So, like, if you blow it on the first uh, run-through like I did, you don't have them in the second one unless you spend items to get them back, and those items don't come readily. So, the gameplay inside isn't that exciting, because it's still the same 3 by 3 battle, but that extra sort of thought process and how far can I get is actually... It makes doing those battles a bit more exciting than I'm just going to have to bowl this over. Because you do bowl over the lower levels, but you still have to think about what you're doing because of the higher levels yet to come. Uh, also, if you are able, you will earn lots of competition rewards in the Battle Villa, including special items such as Lucky Cookies and Lucky Scrolls. You can use these rewards to give your sync pairs new co compatibilities, capabilities known as Lucky Skills. At the end of the challenge period, you will receive rewards corresponding to the number of battles you cleared, so try to get as far as you can. They also added Valerie and Sylveon, which we talked about last week, so you can now go up to chapter 24. Valerie isn't a pull. 
Valerie is just a reward you get for completing that chapter. So she's get up there. Four star, I think. Um, I think she's. Four I star. think she's three star. Oh, okay. Because she's, like she's the just the one that you get second fairy besides Granville. Yeah. Yep. There is Cygna suit Eliza and uh, Rotom, which will be available like the same as Red and Steven. Uh, they can use X special attack to everyone. They will also come with an expanded Syncrid like Red and Charizard. Uh, you can now evolve a bunch of Pokemon, including uh, Calum and Esper, Hilbert and Oshawa, Blaine and the famous Blaine Ponyta. Um, not what I think of when I think of Blaine, but okay. <laughs> I do think of Rapidash, though, so this makes a little bit more okay, sense. Okay, sure. Sure. I think in Pokemon Stadium he had a Rapidash, but yeah. I feel like the TV show really hit home with that Magmar. Yeah, I mean everything. Yeah, you got that right. Every everybody that you couldn't, basically you couldn't evolve before, you can now. So my dusk, what's the middle one? Dusk clops. My dusk clops is now finally a dusk noir. Dusk noir. Yeah. I, that was the very first one I did because I'm like I I use this all the time and I need the bulk. So the shining star event, uh, Elisa's Rotom, her, her solo challenge is also very interesting. It's a whole map system, so you move through things to get different rewards, and you have to get up move tokens to be able to move through the maze. Again, the gameplay in the actual game is the same old gameplay, but there's at least an extra element of, okay, I'm going to think about how I want to move through this maze and what I want to pick up, and do I want to use all of my moves on this one, or do I just want to get to the end to get to the next thing that might have better rewards? It's actually this. I think this is the first time that they've really branched out to try a lot of very different things. I think the Battle Villa and Eliza's event are both very positive signs that they are willing to look at other games, other things that work really well and figure out an intelligent way to work it into this system. I still think there's too much low-level grinding, but this is more of what I want from end-game content. Like, interesting challenges, things that I that I want that are unique from each other. Like, when this event goes away, hopefully something better will replace it that's, that's different. I think the problem with, like, the Steven Stone event and the Mewtwo event and the Rayquaza event is that the progression was exactly the same. You went through a story, and then you did the exact same co-op. These feel very different, and that makes the game a lot more exciting. For the first time this weekend, I'm like, ooh, I kind of want to jump into Masters and just run through some of the new interesting stuff. And I have not said that about this game until these hit. So I think this is a very positive turning point for Masters, and I really hope that they continue experimenting this way and really trying a bunch of new ways to interact with their base gameplay. Now that we've seen the journey of Greg slowly start to change. <laughs> hey, I caught Barry. You catch him, right? Yeah. I caught a Barry. You caught a Barry? Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> the Barry, the you owe me a million dollars guy. Yeah, yeah, that did. I caught him on the beach because he thought I was part of Team Break. Oh, Although, right. Yes. Technically, I'm not in my sync group, which also is weird to me, but Okay. But to commemorate Pokemon Day in Pokemon Masters, you will receive a one-time gift of 3,000 gems, uh, which is 10 character pulls. If you log into the game at any time between March 15th, you can also get the six-month celebration login bonus, which will give you another 3,000 gems uh, by logging in uh, for 14 times in the 14-day period. Um, but because it's now to March 15th, you could like miss like four days and still be fine. Um, if you want to know how much 3000 gems in is in money, mm. it's about 25 bucks. So just by logging in and collecting your Pokemon day bonus, you're getting what would, I guess, technically be $25 worth of in-game cur currency to pull. I mean, in reality, it's $0 because you can't yeah. put a value on did, well, man, it's not like you, there's a marketplace to like sell your extra oh. Steven Stones. Did you also see that you can now favorite your sync pairs so they show up in your lobby more? Oh, what? Really? Yeah. No. 
Good. Yeah, I can so get Bruno out of this lobby. Yeah, get so, out. Wait. So, okay. Now, let me just see if I can put this into terms I can understand. I start up the game. My ears explode because of the brass horns. And then somebody is standing there yelling at me because I'm not playing enough. So I can basically pick the person who's going to yell at me for not playing enough. <laughs> yes. Like okay. right now, Red is the one that quote unquote yells at me, which is just a whole bunch of dots. And that is my ideal. What? Greeting. Dang. Now I got to pull Red. Wait, where, do you, where do you go to like set them? Uh, go into edit team. Okay. Uh, pick on pick on whoever you want, and then next to them, when they show up at the top, you'll see a little plus. Oh, I see. And then there's a heart up in the corner, oh. and you can select that heart, and they will show up more often. So Gardenia and Roserade show up more often, and Red shows up more often for me. All right. And who else do I want? You want? Who you probably should... want Wolfric, right? Oh, no. Phoebe, definitely. Phoebe should show up more often. I use Phoebe a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell Steven Stone to visit. But it's 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 a nice it's it's like a little thing that I discovered. I'm like, oh, that makes me feel more connected to this game. Like I the people that I like using, even though I don't use them a lot in game, I can at least interact with them and they'll give me things more often. They'll show up more often. And that's a fun little change. It makes me more willing to log in instead of I'll get like Wolfric sitting over there yelling at me. I'm like, I don't want you here. Go uh, away. I'm you know, Bruno telling you to trade harder every time you log yeah, in. Yeah, no. You can go now. Thanks, Bruno. But that was a cute little change that I discovered. I'm like, ooh, yay. Let's talk about this mythical. Wolverine's oh, here. Boy, oh boy. Zarud, the rogue monkey Pokemon has been discovered. We have confirmed the existence of a new mythical Pokemon, a dark and grass type Pokemon with a clever mastery of vines. Incredible news, trainers. This is off Pokemon.com, by the way. Uh, we can confirm the new mythical Pokemon has been discovered. Zarud, the road rogue monkey, is a dark and grass type Pokemon that cannot be found in normal gameplay of Pokemon Sword and Shield. This mythical Pokemon stands the average of 5'11", weighs 154 pounds, and has the ability Leaf Guard. Zarud can grow vines from its back of its neck and its wrist and the soles of its feet at will. These vines are strong and flexible, and they can be used for a variety of purposes. Zarud will use the vines to wrap around trees and branches to move around or grab berries from distant branches. These vines have healing properties. If Zarud wraps its vines around a wound, it will the wound will heal. Well, that, I'm sure that's a plot point in the movie. Thanks, Pokemon. <laughs> did you watch the trailer? I did. Uh, it has been reported that Zarud lives in a pack deep in the heart of a dense forest. It treats anyone that isn't part of its pack with immediate hostility, attacking right away. Because of this, other Pokemon that live in the same forest are afraid of Zarud. When fighting, Zarud swings around tree branches, attacking relentlessly with sharp claws or other means it has. Uh, its quick wit will help it excel in battles. And that is all the information we have on Zarud. And they show him so moving in the game. And yep. they have a movie trailer, which only came out in Japan, not for us uh for but pokemon the movie coco coco yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that like so can we talk are we spoiler alert spoiler alert if you haven't seen this trailer spoiler 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 so for a trailer is that a thing yeah just okay. because it starts with a shiny celebi it does yeah and so all i can think of is okay so this mythical is strong against psychic and so it's strong against Celebi, like I'm like that has to be at least somewhat of a major plot point in the movie, right? Like, well, if you so I okay, so before we talk about the like, there's a point I want to bring up in the trailer. Okay, when I saw Zarud, I was like, oh, it looks like a Pokemon. Like, I get it. It doesn't scream like Ultra Beast or anything. Uh, but I didn't love it. And I don't know how Not you guys right. felt about it. I was fine with it. It screams that sort of dark, edgy uh, Wolverine hero type thing, which I don't really like that was so popular in the 90s. What I got from it. So I thought it was an interesting design, but it's it's not. It's got that sort of hot topic -y feel that I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, I guess you could say Genesect maybe has that feel, or Darkrai maybe has that feel. Like, it's not 
It's not an unusual mythical. Think, There's like, like always two well, types of mythicals. There's like I your think, like, edgier Dark one. Dark Rye has has a very strong theme, right? Dark Rye is a shadow. It it really fits that theme, and it's hard to say what this theme is. It's like it's definitely belongs oh, in it's, the jungle. It's Tarzan. It's Tarzan. British, yeah, UK noble that raised in the jungle. I mean, that's what the whole high, what the right. Coco movie is. Um, I want my mythicals to be cute. Period. I don't want. I don't want these <laughs> grumpy mythicals. No, no. I want cuties. I want. I want Victinis. I want uh, Muse, Deancies, ho- Little Hoopas, Magirnas, Mar Shadows. I want to give them hugs. I want a shaman. I'll take a, the, the regular shaman. Uh, Keldio, even. I don't want these grouchy mythicals. Yeah, but that mask is going to be real popular at Halloween. That butterfly face. No. Yeah. Good um, old thing. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't too hot on it. And I, I mean, I, was, I also wasn't too hot on Zera Aura. Once again, not a cutie. But I, I'm a huge fan <laughs> of Darkrai, and I really liked Genesect a lot. You only um, like Darkrai because of the movie. Dark. Dark Rye. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so Look, like. That, I mean, after episode 400, you're not allowed to say that anymore. I I'm put in the oh, kibosh. Dang. You you were right in the fact that movies have definitely influenced my opinion on Pokemon because I thought Volcanion was really cool until I saw that movie, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> nah, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Steampunk Volcano is not your friend no more. The trailer, which um, you can search for official trailer, movie, Pokemon Movie 23, Coco. So, is Rude a color that we don't know, like Damazenta and yeah, Lassie know, Edward? right? Yeah. Is, is, is uh, Rude, is Rude, like, green? Is there a green color that's Rude? Because it does fit, like... It wasn't a surprise that it was grass because that's they did the they did the three colors the three primary colors red blue and now green that made total sense I going in knew it was going to be grass I was just confused by the name I mean I think they're just saying he's a rude boy is that it like just not yeah, going with the color scheme so um za is something in Japanese that eventually equals monkey. <laughs> Like uh, I think, <laughs> I think Pizza it's a monkey. I think it's like Saru is is what the like za is. Uh, I guess we would have to ask Andrew, but um, I'm only yeah, I only get the rude part of its name. I've seen people say that it has a lot of characteristics, and I kind of agree with them. With specifically, uh, Grookey and Thwacky. Yes. I mean, this is, we've had this conversation a million times. There's plenty of Pokemon that look like other Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> Mufalant and Tauros, Miltank and Tauros, Love Disc and that bad bigger fish. That one, yes. Like in the in the lore of Pokemon, that, that doesn't ever surprise me when a Pokemon looks slightly like another Pokemon. I wonder if there... Could be two other mythicals. I'd be really interested if one was a rabbit and the other one was a lizard. And a, you're a, a lizard, lizard, Harry. Well, Sobble's Wait, a, a, is Sobble not a lizard? Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. Mostly. Because not only is Zarud another monkey, and we have a lot of monkey Pokemon. There's a lot of monkeys in the in the world. Yeah, uh, but I will not accept this. There's no, no. Have, I'm not what, complaining about the monkey. I'm just we have like eight billion. I'm dogs just saying in the world. we got a starter monkey that was grass, and now we have a mythical monkey that is grass. And I'm here, and we know that there's at least one more mythical, and we know that there might be another mythical that might be like the cute mythical, the like the Celebi or the mm. um. Mew or the Jirachi. I need a cute mythical. I need it. I mean, this is cute in its own way. Yeah, so I no. I warmed up to Zarud more when I saw the trailer. Uh, okay, so this is the thing yeah. in the trailer that's that's kind of important. Uh, it's an easy sell for me. You put a cape on any Pokemon, <laughs> I'm buying in. <laughs> okay, but you don't like superheroes. I don't, but like a, a Pokemon but- wearing a cape is is very adorable. 
Um, Why? I, what? I don't. It's like when Pikachu puts a hat on, or like when Pikachu's holding a ketchup bottle. There's like something about. Hey, what? hey, hey! Don't bring in the ketchup bottle. Like, what? no, no, no. What other no. Pokemon in movies have had capes? None. But uh, there's like oh. something about. Uh, I don't know, like a Pokemon wearing something that I'm into. Look, the reason that Licky, the reason that Licky Licky is so good in the Dark Cry movie is it because it has that dumb sash across it? Because it's that one dude that turns into the Licky Licky. Oh, it wouldn't have been wowzers. as good if he didn't have the sash. He has the sash. I, so okay, so no, okay. Whatever. The sure. so if you watch the trailers, the Rude is wearing a cape, which I think does add more personality to it. Specifically, the cape is pink, and specifically, the cape has the numbers two fifty one on it, which is not only Celebi's number, but it's the same pink that Shiny Celebi is. <gasps> yeah. Also, Mojo Jojo from Power Puff Girls wears a similar cape, so make your own judgment. There's a whole power. There's a whole Power Puff Girls thing like look it up on the internet it's kind of funny uh look it up uh there's a crime rant in this movie so i'm sold there he is uh and yeah, then i saw that at the end of the and trailer it pikachu and at the end of the trailer Zarude is sitting in the hot spring and that is also very cute because that's what the monkeys in japan do i saw that yeah. on tv i played monster i Hunter. did no, they come down from the mountain the monkeys in japan they come down and they sit in the hot spring and then you can go to the park and visit them and they're protected. It's real cute. For me, the movie trailer made me warm up to Zarud a lot more than just the the initial screenshot. Um, I can't say that the shiny Celebi or the Zarud itself has made me excited for that movie, but you put a Cramoran in, I'm sold. Uh, I'm also not huge on Tarzan. Like, I never liked Tarzan as a kid. I, I don't really like that. Uh, well, there's been well, more. I mean, movies. there's it's been very other... problematic. So, yeah, I mean, it is it is is a classic story. It is a problematic story to say the least. But it is a classic. It's a classic story. The only thing is, like, we already had this with the Kangaskhan kid, so I'm not like thrilled that we're revisiting that again. Uh, well, like, how does it's... Tarzan end? Girl comes, finds Tarzan. They get married. Uh, he her leaves name the force. is Jane. Thank mm-hmm. you. Okay. It depends on which version you're watching. Like, the standard one, he returns and is civilized back into society somewhat. It's, yeah. There's a danger of somebody trying to capture Zarud and Ash. No, they're destroying the forest. Didn't you notice the trees were falling down? Did you pay attention to this trailer at all? No. Uh, no, well, yeah, I did. There's a Cramoran in it. I'm in. I'm already sold. I just, Sold to the lowest like the, bidder. Like the, I'm excited for the movie, but the general theme of the movie just seems very not exciting. Yeah, but you know, you hey, wait, we it's going to be awesome. Hopefully, we had the power. We had the power of us, and I choose you. So, yeah, nowhere to go but up. Well, hmm. yike. <laughs> well, yike! I would put indeed. I choose you significantly higher than the Volcanion movie. Yeah, but that's not been the that's not that's a a while ago. I'm talking about the last two films. Yeah, it looks like it's just Ash again, um, and yeah. no partners. But okay, does this mean that Team Rocket has Cramorant? Is that what we're getting here? I'm. It looks like they're stealing looks the Cramorant. Like they're trying to steal Cramorant, and the Cramorant oh, looks it. so dumb that it doesn't know what's happening. Which th- that's me. Yeah, but it's is like, that like your chef's I'm, kiss moment right there? I'm, yes, I'm worried that the Cramorant jokes are going to be the same as the Psyduck jokes. No, 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 no. If Cramorant should be the Munchlax of this movie, because Munchlax <laughs> was the best part of Destiny Deoxys, because it was like Munchlax had the through line, and it was its own like good story going through. Isn't that much less than the donut machine or the hot dog machine? Is yeah. That's the only reason why you like it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh then he like, tips over a couple of trash cans. It's great. Wow. It's it's real good. As long as Cramorant is gargling Pikachu, I'm there. Yeah, I mean, if 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 we walk away from this movie with, with a bad story of Tarzan but good Cramorant moments, that will be better than 90% of Pokemon movies. <laughs> Geez, Steve, you're such a kid. Okay, so before we get into Pokemon of the Year, sounds like Maddie is back and she is on the move. So let's let's see what Maddie is up to. Hi guys, 
welcome to the next episode of Maddie on the Move. It is February 22nd. It's another community day. It's nice and beautiful and sunny in Minneapolis, and I just got to the Mall of America. Looks like it's going to be a little busy inside. I had to park all the way up on the sixth level. So here's hoping there's going to be a lot of people playing Pokemon Go. All right, let's get inside. Word on the street is that Will from the podcast is here, so I'm on my way over to find him, but literally this place is insane today. Okay, you guys, I made it. I found Will. We're right by Moose Mountain, and this place is a little crazy. Will, what do you think today's going to be like? Uh, well, it's exceptionally crowded. The parking was impossible, and uh, I think I've already gotten three shiny ride horns already, so I'm done for the day. That's amazing. Okay, we're going to go down to Nickelodeon Universe and see if we can uh, scare some strangers. Yay! Okay, I'm here. I found a family with matching shirts. Do you guys do Community Day a lot? Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite part about Community Day? The shinies with the grandkids. Oh, fun! How long have you been doing this? Um, I've done it twice, but I don't know how long it's been. The JDRF walk we've done for 10 years, and then we just stay to play. So you get to come here for a cause and then just spend the day together? Yep. That's so awesome. Yeah. How many shinies have you caught today? Three. Three? How about you? Two. Nice, nice. I've got nine shinies. Nine shinies? <laughs> How about you? Three. Three? Grandpa gets out the most all the time. We have a contest. Maddie here with two more people playing Pokemon Go. What's your name? My name's Julia. Julia. And I'm Lexi. Lexi, so what is your favorite part about today's community day? Shinies. Shinies? Yeah. So how many Rhyhorns have you guys caught? Hundreds. Hundreds? Hundreds? Yeah. What do you do with hundreds of shiny Rhyhorns? Turn them into candy. Nice. Well, I see you're wearing a Growlithe shirt, correct? Organine. Organine. Well, <laughs> we're going to say that I was right because people can't see a podcast. That works. Um, so does that mean that you play Pokemon outside of Pokemon Go? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, probably Emerald. Emerald? How come you like Emerald the best? I don't know. Battle Frontier. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Do you play any other Pokemon? Oh, yeah, definitely. I would have to say um, Emerald, Sapphire, Ruby also because they were the first game that I ever played too. So nice. Yeah, it's really surprising walking around. A lot of people just play Pokemon Go and have uh -huh. like no other experience with Pokemon, which is fine. But, I mean, I loved Pokemon Go because I've been playing Pokemon forever. <laughs> exactly. And just like, I need it in the real world. <laughs> exactly. And when, I'm like, you get the pet, like my buddy, and I had Meowth, and he was sitting in my living room, like, next to my cat. I was like... This is incredible. Amazing. Who did you guys pick as your buddy? I'm with a shiny Umbreon right now. Nice. How about I, you? I have Luxray because it's one of my favorite Pokemon. Okay, we've been here for like an hour or so. We're walking past the old time photos. Will, should we get some old time photos sometime? Are you saying that I'm old? Is that what you're trying to imply? I mean, I say if you're wearing an old Western uniform, you're not going to look bad in it. I would look so cute in that. I, I think. We do need to get back to Ragsock, though, because we need to get those holographic raincoats. Yeah, watch out for the next cover of the episode. It's going to be me and Will matching Rain holograph <laughs> see-through raincoats. <laughs> All right, I found a couple of people here by Moose Mountain playing Pokemon Go. What are your names? Um, I'm Colin. Colin. Susan. What's your favorite part about playing Pokemon? to get all the shinies, and during this event so far, I've got 10 shinies. 10? Is it all Rhyhorn? Yep. What are you gonna do with them? Um, I'm gonna trade some to friends, and I'm gonna get a shiny, I'm gonna get a shiny Rhydon and a shiny Rhyperior also. That sounds like a really good day. Do you guys do community day a lot? Uh, we try to, yeah. So as uh, a mom of two boys obsessed with Pokemon, it's nice to come out, especially in the cold, to the Mall of America. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Bye. Bye. You guys, the mall was crazy. That was a lot of people playing Pokemon. I think we talked to some good ones. I think we got some good stuff. Will and I had a lot of fun walking around, looking at crazy stuff in the Mall of America. I didn't catch a single rye horn because I was too busy talking to people. But that's okay because that's what Maddie and the Move is about. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks, Maddie. Pokemon of the year. All right, I got a difficult one for you guys. <laughs> I mean, it's Pokemon of the year. I made it real tough.
Just kidding. How do you, how do you want to do this? You want to go by region? You want to just do top five of let's, top let, five? Let's do top five first. Okay, and then we'll talk about how everybody was wrong and how upset that and how Force isn't any anywhere on the Jodo list. You all failed me. <laughs> there is nothing surprising about this list to me. What about you guys? I mean, I was surprised about number one. I was surprised one. at who number one actually was because I was sure. It was going to be Charizard. Oh, yep. okay. Spoiler, it, it wasn't Charizard. It wasn't Charizard. Charizard. All right, number five, Umbreon. Like, why? No, okay, I, no, fine. no, no, no. Props. I think Umbreon is a beautiful, svelte, <laughs> evolution. Yeah, but I... Sylveon's better. Sylveon is better. In, in your opinion, no, the, there's those people obviously are wrong. a lot more Umbreon no, lovers. Up, but, Do you know, please. okay, everyone who loves Umbreon... Let me, let me, I'm sorry. I'm going to break down the Umbreon crowd. Okay, because I'm in the Umbreon crowd. Yeah, they were all edgelords in middle school when Gold and Silver <laughs> came out. You, you were an edgelord in middle school, so why are you not an, Umbre- an uh, Umbreon fan? Because your, your choice at the time was you were, you were either so committed to Eevee that Umbreon was the natural progression, right? Okay. And I'm not disagreeing. Umbreon is significantly better than Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon. Or you went the other Edgelord route and you gravitated towards Houndour and Houndoom. Oh, yeah, because they got skulls. Right. And I, I ended up in the Houndour, Houndoom camp. Ugh. Did you, are, you really? I, I, look, I was a very troubled <laughs> child. <laughs> uh, I can't even say the Gen 1ers came out in force. So Charizard, number four. Mimi Q number three. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Good I'm here job. for it. Number two is the worst. Number two hurts my soul. Number two is Lucario. No. That's Why? intriguing. I I blame that on the Europeans. Uh, no, oh, this a- is absolutely. It, mm, it is Get it together, Europe. It is surprising to me that. Lucario got more votes than Charizard. I would I would argue that they really struggled with Gen 3 and trying to push a Pokemon that people can gravitate towards like Charizard. They didn't even really even have one for Gen 2. Uh, you could argue no. that it was like the Eevee evolutions. I mean, I will say that, I mean, if you look at the votes... Gen three did very well. I mean, Gen three is expect is is exactly what I expect Gen three to be. <laughs> I'm I'm sure if you rewound the podcast to seven weeks ago, I think we said like either Espeon or Umbreon Char- is br- winning Johto, Kanto's winning Charizard's winning Kanto, and that uh, Rayquaza is going to run- win Hoenn, and that's what happened. And that's exactly what, well, we knew that. And that Lucario, like it's not surprising that- to me that Lucario won. So now that's what I expected. Yes. Gen 5 is like the only thing that like blew me away here. I will argue that Gen 5 Gen 5 had the worst showing of all the gens. See, the problem is all the Gen 5 Pokémon are so wonderful. It's just hard to pick one that stands out uh, above I all mean, of so I so much excellence. Can't tell that that's sarcasm, but I I, I think there's some truth F- behind from that. From William R. Anderson, you think any praise of Gen 5 is sarcasm? Then how have we been doing this program together for eight years? <laughs> we haven't even talked about what number one was. Yeah, okay. We so- just stopped at Lucario. <laughs> yeah, because Lucario throws a whole wrench in everything. The The Gen 3 fan base were, were very vocal for their remix. They won their horns. And we got them, they, and we're very happy. They, they were very happy, and then they instantly shut up. Whereas, yeah, because we got what we wanted. Whereas, like... The the Johto fanboys will never shut up. They gotta keep no, letting you know that that's uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver is their favorite game in the entire universe, and blah blah blah, and two regions. Even though it's garbage, and uh, they bug like we like the the Johto fans. Well, they'll never shut up. No, the Hoenn fans. They they got their game. They were happy. Yep. They they We're love they love their it. starters and they love their legendaries. It's really the only thing that Gen Three has to offer. Gen winners are the worst, and they never shut up either. And then the Sinnoh fans are now at the age where they have become, I I would argue, as bad as Gen winners. Where like they're um, they're because Sinnoh was their first Pokemon game. 
because Lucario is their Charizard, that they think that their region and their game was perfect, and pff, Sinnoh is far from perfect. <laughs> well, none of the games are perfect. Sure. But, yeah. But Sinnoh, they have Sinnoh, that mindset, Sinnoh's right? Like, somebody, rough. like, yeah. you'll, you'll, meet a, you'll meet a Gen 1-er, and they'll say, like, oh, you know, Pokemon got bad after 150. Uh, like Kanto is the best region, most memorable. One fifty one, thank you. One fifty one, yeah. And well, that now that mindset like exists for people for Sinnoh, and I would expect the same thing if we were to get Sinnoh remakes. This fan base will not shut up. They will no. They will continue on. So as much as I don't, and we are getting those remakes. You know we're getting those. Yeah, remakes. sure. I, I mean, they love money. It'd be silly not to. Yeah, absolutely. They love money. If there's one thing about the Gen Three fans, not my favorite region, but they, my favorite region. They were very happy with their remade region, and they absolutely. went back to doing their thing. We are an easy to please, <laughs> happy group who don't harp on things, unlike. The rest of all y'all, we know the perfection of our region. We got it. We're happy with it. If you can't see it, that's on you. And number one. With a bullet. Greninja. I was somewhat (laughs) surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised because of the anime, I guess. I really thought that Charizard and Greninja would have been reversed in the standing. I would have probably said Greninja was top three. Yeah. Um, and I would have probably said Lucario top five. I would have actually put maybe Eevee or Mewtwo at number one. Uh, because Eevee fanboys are everywhere. Everywhere. E- Eevee fan people. Thank you. Eevee fan folks. I'm yeah, Mewtwo not being uh, a lot higher is surprising since Mewtwo is, is very, very dominant in Japan. I mean, so is Charizard. I I don't um, know so a is lot. So Greninja. Of... No, yeah. Greninja. Greninja does the thing that uh, appeals to a lot of people. They 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 combined uh, Pokemon and Naruto Ninja, together. Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now they just need to. What's One Piece? Pirates. They just need to find some pirate they theme did. to Straw Hat Pikachu. Yeah, but they gotta apply that to a Pokemon to carry Greninja's oh. success because One Piece is very popular. I mean, they just it, maybe that's what Zarud is. It's got the gum gum fruit, makes its arms stretch. <laughs> Would you stop? Don't no. <laughs> what? Okay, so you said gum gum fruit, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I think, and I, I think in retrospect, Greninja is not surprising uh, because I, if you, if you were to look at least. At the anime series. Yeah. I would argue that people were upset that Ash lost because the relationship between Ash and Greninja was probably the best relationship they wrote. I would agree. Second to, like, Ash and Charizard. Or I guess, like, but I mean, besides Ash and Pikachu, that's I don't think that that's a fair comparison, but... And that's probably why Sceptile's a lot higher than some other Pokemon is because of Ash's Sceptile. Yeah, I mean, definitely the anime has changed. And definitely influence. Were we at all surprised by who won Galar? Okay, well let's let's go through all let's go through the top ten for each real quick. And all right. uh I think the first couple are not surprising here. So Kanto is coming in at number ten is Lapras, nine Arcanine, eight Mewtwo, seven Mew, six Dragonite, five Eevee, four Pikachu, three Bulbasaur, two Gengar, and one Charizard. Oddly enough, when uh, people were complaining about the national decks, they ran their Reddit poll, and Charizard came in number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ironic that uh, the Pokemon company wouldn't want to cut the number one Pokemon from their games. Uh, and Gengar was also, I want to say, very, very high, as well as Arcanine, very, very high uh, on those polls. Yeah, I don't think there's any surprises here with that top ten. No. Uh, I would have probably maybe saw Snorlax in the top 10. It, it shied out here at 11. 11. Um, but, like, literally, I don't think there was any any surprises uh, with that list. I mean, I'm mad that Cubone is on the list, but whatever. Yeah. No Mr. Mime. Cubone was robbed. Okay. Defo robbed. Johto. Now we're going to talk about the crime that is Johto. <laughs> yeah. Dunsparce isn't on this list at all, and I'm very mad at everybody. I gave you very explicit instructions. 
and none of you followed through. You know, there's no quillfish on here either. Well, because quillfish is terrible. All right, number 10. Totodile, <laughs> Suicune, Cyndaquil, Espeon, which I thought was a little low. EV, EV people may be, uh, yeah. you know, split on this. Uh, Ampharos, uh, Scizor, Typhlosion, Lugia, Tyranitar, Umbreon. There's no surprise with that top three at all. Nope. Nope. No. Yeah, that's very straightforward. For uh, Hoenn, I'm a little shocked that uh, Absol made top 10, actually. Um, oh, Absol's way Absol's popular. very popular. Uh, but I was surprised that it... That it I, I expected Mawile to be higher um, because of its... You, like, people use it all the time. Um, so I was surprised that that was way down in 18. At least Sableye made the list, so I'm fine. Uh, can we tell the weirdest part of this list is Aaron at 13. This is mind blowing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, Aaron and Agron, 13 and 14. Yeah. Like, I, I don't I, know I, why that's so weird to me. <laughs> also, hold on. Woo. Let's back up. Not two came in at 18 for Johto. Excuse me. Not two. Because they're cute. Because they're cute. Look at your edgelord, Houndoom, was beaten out by Look, Natu. you had slim pickings in Johto, I understand, but boy. That's... I mean, Wooper at least made the list. Okay. Coming at number 10, Absol, Milotic, Jirachi, Metagross, Mudkip, Blaziken, Sceptile, Flygon, Gardevoir, and uh, Rayquaza. I... I thought Metagross would have been higher. Really, I did think that yeah. Metagross would have been higher than Flygon. I, I agree. I would put Metagross over Flygon in what I thought but prior. Gardevoir's position doesn't surprise me. Gardevoir is amazing. No, the same people who voted for Gardevoir voted for Lucario. 100%. Not, not a doubt in my mind. Rude. I did not <laughs> vote for Gardevoir. <laughs> I voted for Sableye. Oh, I also yeah. didn't vote for Lucario. Uh, Sinnoh, your top 10, uh, Giratina, Empoleon, Arceus, Glaceon, Darkrai, Infernape, Piplup, Luxray, Garchomp, and then Lucario. Can we just finally say that Turtwig is the bad starter of Sinnoh? Yes. <laughs> Since the other ones were all the top 10, and Turtwig is way down in 21. Uh, anyone who voted for Lopunny also probably voted for Gardevoir and Lucario. I'm just putting that out there. Lopunny came in at 19. Bidoof, who I you put Bidoof at 20 and you didn't put Dunsparce anywhere on the list. Oh, Bidoof is a thousand times better than Dunsparce. Come, get a dose of reality. Come on. <laughs> Bidoof is at 20 and Roserades at 26. Excuse me? The only shocker here for me is Rotom's not top 10. I don't think people like base Rotom, though. I think they like yeah. the forms. Mm. And yeah, the forms agreed. didn't happen until, what, uh, Gen 5? I they happened in 4. No. I don't think they did. Weird mention, both Miss Drevious and Miss Megius made top 30 in their respective things, which is, like, slightly... Weird to me because I feel like no one ever talks about those Pokemon or ever brings those Pokemon up in <laughs> well, any conversation. People, the people thing like is, their this witches, was, and this was a worldwide vote. And you keep right. thinking of like U.S. people. I no, mean, I'm they not. would be like in, incredibly unpopular or incredibly popular in China or something. Well, I don't. Even, I, I don't think they were allowed to vote because they don't have Google in China. That's not a hundred percent true. There's ways around that. I'm sure there is. Like, I do, like, I, I, if this was, like, a Japanese-only list, I guarantee you Snorlax would have been top five. Like, and if this was an uh, American-only list, uh, I guarantee you, like, Snorlax would have been top five. Like, I, I do know the difference between, like, I do know what's popular in Japan compared to, like, America, and those are probably the two biggest markets voting. Yeah. Another just honorable mention here is Porygon, Porygon 2, and Porygon Z all made top 30 in their respective areas. Wild. Let's go to Gen 5, which has probably the most interesting Pokemon here listed. So number 10 is Reshiram, number 9, Victini, number 8, Zekrom, uh, 7, Oshawott, 6, Superior, 5, Haxorus, 4, Volcanion, 3, Hydragon, 
two Zorark and one Chandelure. That number one is uh, wild Volcarona. to me. Volcarona, Volcarona, Volcanion <laughs> is a Gen 6 Pokemon. Did I say Volcanion? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Volcarona. I always have Volcanion also, on the brain. Are we also admitting that Tepig and Embor are bad? Well, they're not bad. They just they're weren't selected this by this particular are they the only stars. like Is Tepig the only starter that didn't make it? Yep. Wait, did Gen 2 have all so. starter makers? I see a Cyndaquil. I see a Chikorita. Totodile's like super up there, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. No, Charmander didn't make top 30. Yeah. Oh, no, he did. He's 17. Never mind. Tepig isn't on the list that's, at that's all. okay. It's okay. I know it's an acquired taste. A lot of people didn't like Tepig and its evolutions. That's fine. I mean, I still it's... love him. No shock that Samurat, Samurat's not on this list either. I mean, Samurat's 18. Oh, it did it make the list? Yeah. Oh, it did. Weird. But Embor and Tepig, nah. uh I am super surprised that Genesect and, Genesect and Keldeo are, and Kiram are so low. I did not, like, I love Chandler. It's easily one of my favorite Pokemon. I did not expect it to come in number one. I think I actually yeah. voted for it for Gen 5. See, your vote swayed the decision right there. And I would have spe- expected either Zorark or like Keldeo to have won this, and Keldeo's not even top 10. Or Victini, I could have seen, but... No, there's only so many of us Victini lovers out there. <laughs> Is the Victini on the list, though? Yeah, Victini... Yeah, he's nine. yeah, it was nine. I mean, a lot of people like Victini. Kalos. Kalos, your top 10 are Tyrantrum, which... Was unexpected. Sure. Gumi. A little weird. Uh, expected. Evil Tall, Dedene, Talonflame, Gudra, Noivern, Aegislash, Sylveon, Greninja. Uh, yeah, I mm, thought maybe Esper would have been a little bit higher. Because I felt like Esper was the talk of the town when that game first in, came out. In your house, it was. <laughs> Heliolisk made top 30? Very yeah. weird. Who's like who likes Heliolisk? A, a bunch of people. I'm a, I'm happy that Delphox is on the oh, Delphox is probably my did favorite. Drag Algae make number two. Who voted for Drag Algae? Oh, me. I love Drag Algae. So you can take your attitude back home with you because I love. Dra- I know you don't like it. I like it. Where is Drag Algae? Twenty three. It, it was above. Oh, I, yeah. think Dra- I think Drag Algae is real cool. It was above Froakie. What the yeah. heck? Yeah, Froakie got robbed. Uh, d- yeah. It's Whoever, wild. B- B- Brixen and Delphox are on the list because of the Lucario and Low Punny voters. Would you stop? I'm just that like, look, there's a common true. theme between all of these Pokemon. There's they're all like, standing on two legs. <laughs> Fennekin's oh, on the list, and they're not gracious. standing on two legs. No, that gives a pass. That gives a pass because it's a starter. Is Brixen well, okay. like the only middle evolution that made it? Brexit is like literally the only middle evolution that made it. And that's probably because of Pokemon Tournament. Probably, yes. Probably. I mean, Pancham's on there, but Pancham's a cutie. I mean, Pangora also made the list, right? Yeah, both Pancham uh, and Pangora yeah. made the list. I love cute Pokemon. Uh, Alola. Alola. Let's... We have Solgaleo. Beware. That's all TV show. 100%. Yep. Primarina. Golisopod. I also would wager TV show. Um, Incineroar, Zeraora, I, who voted for that? Mm. Oh, I know, the people who voted for Lucario. Um, Lycanroc, Decidueye, Rowlet, and Mimikyu. I mean, Rowlet, best starter. Yup. But, uh, so, Litten is on the list. What was the water starter? Piplup? Poplio. Poplio. <laughs> Primarina made it, top ten. That's yeah. pretty good. So all the starters ended up on in this list, which is just wild that all right, and then we go to Galar and etc. because we can't count. All right, we'll do all 30 uh, for Galar oh. here. My boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, isn't that all the Galar Pokemon? <laughs> no, yeah. there's only like 60. <laughs> I said, my boy came in number 30, Cramorant. Boo. 8,000 people right in the world. Uh, nope. Rillaboom, Obstagoon, Ice Q, Frostmoth, Dracovish. Yeah. Dracovish is 100% because of VGC. Yeah. 
It's also it's also just a funny looking. It's one of the funnier looking. Yeah, it's kind of derpy looking. Yeah. Sente Scorch, which surprising to me, Mel Metal Zamazenta, oh. Grim Snarl, Grookey, Morpeko or Morpeko. Eternatus is uh, 18, Appleton 17, Phalanx, Meltan, under your Gen 8. Take it for what it's worth. It, it was Gen 8 and etc. That's true. This is etc. Ugbolt is etc. Sobble, Hatterene, Score Bunny, Surfetched, Inteleon, Wulu is number 9, Yamper, Zashian, Cinderace, Alcremi, Snom, Corviknight coming in at number three, Toxtricity number two, Dragapult number one. Yeah, wow. there you go. I have one thing to say about Ice Cube that you've you've now reminded me. Just a quick aside. Um, back in the Pokemon Black and White days, I don't remember if they carried this forward for X and Y, but when you played Black and White, if you battled every trainer in that game you saw every single Pokemon, whether it was in your game or not in your game. I realized today that I played through Sword. You know I talk to every trainer. I battle every trainer in the game. I never saw Ice Q even once. Yeah. Ice Q no, is uh, Melanie's Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I'm just saying it's like you, you don't even get to see it yeah. to have it as seen in your Pokedex in, in Sword. Yeah, I don't. Which yeah. you did in black and white. I don't know if that's like a huge issue for me. Um, it, well, I it is because if I wasn't talking to people, I wouldn't even know that Pokemon existed, and it'd be like scratching. I, I yeah, hate having to go out of the game to find out. Gotta have sense of discovery. Things. You're not one of those people that sit on the route and keep seeing if you've caught everything. But I could sit there for the rest of my life and never have come across an ice cube. It's not in my game. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I don't. I've I've only the only time I've seen like two stone journeys is like somebody hosting a stone journey raid that I joined. There's your Galar Pokemon. Uh, is it weird that Corviknight's so high? No, no. Corviknight's cool, Corviknight's dude. Cool. All right, it's like they finally got Skarmory right. <laughs> well, Skarmory on those list. Yeah, Grim Grimmsnarl is not actually surprising to me. That's a pretty cool Pokemon. Well, the Gigantamax version, the regular yeah, it's very version. Cool. Oh, I like the regular, so version. No. I like the regular uh, version. Flapple too. Didn't, too impish. Flapple didn't make the list, but Appleton did. I'm that's, mad about that. Yeah, that's just people who like ugly things. That's what, what that is. Why are you guys hating on pie? I like pie. I don't like Appleton. Does not surprise me. I actually thought Cinderace was going to be number one here. Um, Cinderace. Yeah, Cinderace. But I am not surprised that Toxtricity came in at number two. I'm not either. You got your hot topics playing its guitar chest and yeah, well, smoking cigs in the corner, voting on Umbreon and Toxtricity. I'm sure. I want to. I like that's the thing I'm more interested. in. I'm just in. happy that Snom is four. I need the Venn diagram of who's voting for what Pokemon. <laughs> we need. Hey, Pokemon Company, give us. Give us the spreadsheet. That's well, way got more all the data because you know yeah. Google was just collecting this data and putting it with all of your purchasing and oh, advertising sure. response and all of that oh, stuff. Sure. And now they know everything about everything. But like, if they I were mean, to they already did, if, but if they were ever to do this again, I mean these these this is why like this list was not like surprising to an extent, um, because it's almost always the same Pokemon. Like it's always going to be Charizard for Kanto. It's always going to be Lucario for Sinnoh. Shand okay, all of Unova is a huge mystery still. Uh, and I don't know if the people who started with Unova, what, what age would they be right now? Like 21? Uh, if they were 8 in, what, 2010? Yeah. So they'd be 18 to 20s? Yeah. yeah. And they're... I, I, yeah, I, I don't know where they would be at in life. <laughs> I don't think they know where they're at in life that's either. That's true, that's true. But... Like, as as much as I was, like, saying that people who voted for Lucario voted for Gardevoir and for Lopunny and for Tox, uh, not Tox, uh, Zeraora, like, I do strongly believe that the, there's a theme between those Pokemon um, and a specific type of person, not that, and there's nothing wrong with it, like, likes the bipedal, two-legged Pokemon. Anthropomorphic. And that doesn't like ever like Cinderace walked away from the Gen Eight starters as being the dominant starter. I mean, you could even make that same argument for Greninja, 
of like it is more anthrop- anthropomorphic. Yeah, anthropomorphic. But, yep. But all of the starters in Gen in the current Gen went that route. Yeah, went that route. Yeah. Like, I mean, are you just saying? Are you saying people only vote of them because they walk on two legs? No. Is that your main point? Because a lot they of can these cosplay walk on two as legs. Them. That's why. I mean, I think, like, definitely Lucario had a huge push. Like, it had its own movie. Like, I think all the ones that are on the top had huge pushes. Yeah. With the in, exception in of their... Chandelier. Yeah, but you know, it was weird. Like, Zorar came in second. But I think. But we can't say that Chandler didn't, because Chandler was a huge part of Pokémon Tournament. Oh, that's yep. true, like, that's true. There were big pushes for the ones that are at the top. There were big media presences for all of these. And so, like, I think one of the big things that they're proving is their media works really well. When they push something media-wise, it really does lodge into people and make them like it a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I would say Zorark failed. They literally copied and pasted. It came in number two. Well, no, I mean, in in marketing, I would argue that it seemed like it failed compared to Lucario. Like, they copied and pasted Lucario's push. Yeah, I think that's your opinion. I I disagree with that so much. I think Zorark is not the new Lucario. But they did the same thing between Zorark and Lucario. Like, they took everything they did with Lucario and they applied it to Zorark. They gave it their own movie. They focused on it. They like made yeah, it a spawn but Zorark in the game. Can, like pretend to be another yeah. Pokemon. No, That's I think cool. Zorark is cool. But I think they also did them continue. pushing it didn't seem to. It seemed very forced. But they also didn't push it for as long. Lucario showed up in Pokemon Tournament. Lucario shows up in a lot of things. I mean, they've continued to push Lucario. Lucario, they, go home. They pushed, you know, at the time a few things for Zorark. But they really did not put the weight behind Zoroark that they did Lucario. And Zoroark still came in number two in that gen. And that gen, if you look at it, got very few votes overall. Like, there just wasn't a huge Unova push, I think, as compared to Sinnoh. So it's hard to say, like, it didn't work because Zoroark coming in second for them pushing it hard for that one movie and then sort of backing off Unova. They pushed it in the game, too. It still hits really hard but like Zorark hasn't continued very far out of it like Zorark was never in Pokemon tournament it hasn't shown up in a bunch of the spin-off games whereas like Lucario does mm. yeah has more media presence it I don't know I I could still more. argue that like Zorark didn't live up to their push like the other Pokemon did like if you look at the point value between Charizard Lucario Greninja and Zorark all equal pushes I don't think they were equal pushes I think Unova, if you look at the numbers, Unova was definitely not marketed as hard as all the other ones. It definitely suffered. I mean, it it is just, it's got lower vote totals across the board. I think they didn't know what to do with Unova, and they they didn't do it. No, like, they did everything Nova, right in Unova besides market it. Like, the games yeah, like, were the right agreed. direction. The games were, the, yes. Yeah, the games were great. But I'm the saying spin-off they didn't know, things were the right they didn't direction. They didn't know how to market it. They just didn't know how to market it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I would say the and big thing that was wrong with Gen 5, besides marketing, was the anime was a bad direction. Right. I think overall, the media push for Unova hurt Unova. I I don't think it's easy to say that people who voted for Lucario like it because this. I think Lucario has had a much stronger media presence than anything in Unova. The, the votes clearly show that Unova was the weakest well, of their and, gens. And Lucario came back as a key player in X and Y. In you know? a lot of it's things. Like, like they threw that right back in your face. Lucario is the first mega evolution. Lucario oh. was a mega evolution before Charizard was. Yeah. Like, it's actually surprising to me that uh, Greninja did not make it into Galar, and maybe that will change with the expansion. But, like... Just like there will never be a Pokemon game without Pikachu or Eevee, there will never be a Pokemon game without Charizard, and I can't imagine there will ever be a Pokemon game without Lucario. Like, they're just too popular to cut. Um, and watch, I don't know, like, the ne- like the next game they cut them. But, 
I mean, I guess like if you, I don't know, if you like Charizard or Luke, like I, if you like Lucari that much and Lucari wasn't in Galar, I think those people still would have bought. Um, yeah. I mean, the Greninja I people th- clearly did. I think the one thing that unites like Charizard and Lucario is their designs that the their designs look fierce yet still remain cute. Like yeah, there's a line Pokemon. there's yeah. a line that they really straddle very well with the sort of very strong look of them that still comes across as very friendly. Like it's not a mistake that Char like that Lucario looks like a dog. And it's not a mistake that Charizard looks like a dragon. Like they are pulling on very strong cultural ties and really hitting the the that perfect kid bait point. No, I agree. People like dragons. People like dogs. Very true. I, I like love dogs. my dogs. Rambambi number thirty, by the way. Hello. Yeah. I okay. voted hard for Rambambi. We'll take a break. And then uh, I think the last thing we have is uh, just the disaster that will be March for Pokemon Go. And then our question of the week and our Pokemon of the week. So we will be right back. Why is there not a Pokemon Snap 2? Pokemon Snap 2. Why is there not a Pokemon Snap 2? Pre-order it right now, right now, right now. Stardust bonuses, Shadow Entei. Thunderous and raids and more in March. Trainers. There's just a lot. Break out your calendar and give us... Wait, it doesn't say that. Yeah, give us your monies. Give us your money. Okay. There's a lot going on. First thing, uh, before we get through all of this, we'll try to make it as easy as possible and follow, is that there was some cancellation for some events. So players in Japan, South Korea, and Italy had some of their events postponed. Number one, Shadow Entei from Giovanni. Nope. Don't you care. want to complete your rocket research? Uh, that will be available till the end of March. T- and in case you didn't know, Team Rocket never resets trainers. Uh, so, like, if you were halfway through in January, that will continue on into February. And if you didn't finish in February, continue on to March. It only resets once you beat Giovanni, and then it starts over. So. The March Research Breakthrough Encounter. Last month it was Woobat. I think the month before that was Lapras. It is now Ferocid. And that will go until April 1st. It will be available. Bonus Stardust this time around. It can evolve into Ferrothorn. Stop here real quick. People are really upset that it's still not a legendary. Hasn't been a legendary for a while. Yep. I still think they're, they're doing legendaries through Team Rocket now. Yeah, but they haven't had any new ones, have they? Like it's been all the old, right? But that's that's like, but that's how it always was. Like if you were researching, like Zapdos when or Moltres when it first came out, you were already like eight months behind when they were available Mm -hmm. in raids. True. I it it's weird to me that people complain. Well, that's not weird. It's weird to me that people (laughs) complain that they were saving their research bonus like for weeks because they didn't want to get the Woobat and they were hoping that this would be a legendary. If you are reading the Silph Road and if you are playing Pokemon Go every day. Nope. Just Nope and nope. Cash in your like it's so it they the people complaining the throws to the people complaining. It's like it, the game is asking you to do one task a day to get the little stamp. I mean, I get so it's I so get, easy. Like, it's one of the easiest the only, things to complete a week. The only thing I will say about legendaries not happening in research is in places where there aren't a lot of Pokestops. That was one of the easiest ways to be able to get access to legendaries, right? And if it's moved to a stop-based transaction, 
that is once again hurting communities where they don't have a lot of stops. Yeah, like That's Minneapolis. The, yeah, I we have none. Team Rocket appears so much that if you're doing yeah, one Team Rocket it, a day, it, it appears at stops. So if if you are in a city that has none and you have to travel for one, like that is that's the part that, of the game though is traveling and leaving your house. But well, I how mean, far do I have to go? How far do there's I have to no travel? poke like, stops by my house. Yeah, well, you're liar, like, Will. <laughs> like in okay, rural areas, one. that's like okay. I have to make a thirty to forty minute trip to get to one. That's that's not like us. That's not like us who can go five blocks and probably run into one. Yeah, that I don't buy that excuse because you still have to go to the stop to spin it to do the research task. And some of the research tasks are, you know, walk four kilometers to hatch an egg and then you get the stamp. Like, I it's I don't super buy that. Like, you you still have to spin the stops to get the research tasks. Yeah, but you have to then wait for that research task to be a rocket one, which is random. No, you don't. Oh, you have to wait for a stop to become a rocket one, right. sure. Right, which is random. If there's one that you hit, like, you have to hope that you get it. Like, it is, it is not ideal. And I can see why that upsets people. There, it should be in both. Like, they should swap them out every once in a while. Is all I'm saying. I get the complaint. It's for Rossied, so I, I, yeah. It seems like they're very done with putting legendaries in there. I wonder if yep. they figured out that, like, oh, people will stop raiding and just wait this out. And if that is the case, then <laughs> then sure. Thunderous coming to five star raids starting on Monday, March second, one p.m. Thunderous, the Bolt Strike Pokemon will be in five star raids. First discovered in the Unova region, electric flying type. Okay, Oof. here's the big stuff: a month of legendary special raid weekends. A month of it. <sighs> We're gonna start with Darkrai. <laughs> oh gosh, I actually didn't know it was this coming weekend. Yeah, it's right here. Dark right Darkrai special raid weekend will happen from Friday, March 6th, 8 a.m. to Monday, March 9th, 10 p.m. local time. And without using a game shark, <laughs> this is the first time you can actually get shiny Darkrai. Unless I'm wrong on that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't recall ever seeing a shiny Darkrai before. No. So I've seen people hunt Darkrai, and they use, I think it's called a tweaking glitch to get to mm. the area, because like Mew in... So the only way to get a shiny Mew is that if you had a Japanese copy of Emerald, you get an item called the Old Sea Map. Yep. And the Old Sea Map, which was never released in the United States, uh, lets you go to visit the island where Mew was on, and then you could soft reset that Mew encounter. And Mew wasn't shiny locking didn't exist at that point was didn't exist until Gen five, um, so you could soft reset, and I'm pretty sure Darkrai and Shaman and Arceus all needed events, and I'm almost positive those events didn't come to America. I think maybe one of them did, um, but I don't actually know off the top of my head. Anytime I search for Shiny Darkrai, it's always like, here's the action replay steps, and these are the codes you have to enter. And I mean, they've distributed Darkrai, but the distributions yeah. were always locked. Darkrai's first, can be shiny, all weekend. And then the following weekend will be Altered Form Giratina Special Raid Weekend. That'll be March 13th through the 16th, Shiny Giratina. Cobalion will follow the week after that, Friday to Monday, the 20th to the 23rd. Guess what? Cobalion's back. It's shiny. It has yeah. Sacred Sword. It's almost like we said that exactly was going to happen on the podcast, yeah. and that's why we all skipped Cobalion to begin with. <laughs> and then again, for the 100th time, Lugia is coming back from Friday, March 27th to the 30th, and it will know an exclusive attack, uh, which I'm getting tired of this. But it will know Aerial Blast, and if you're lucky, you can encounter a shiny Lugia. Ugh. Um, so every weekend in March, it's too much. Is a raid event with you know a lot of Pokemon returning for the first time being shiny. Uh, Pokemon with exclusive moves. That is not all. Don't worry. They there. There's more to this. Not only okay. So I 
I get it. It's clearly proven that people will go out. Like, okay, so two things. One, you don't have to do every event. You're not interested in altered form Giratina? Cool. You just don't have to do it. Thank you for the permission. You're very yep. welcome. Uh, and number two, I'm sure that their research has proven that, like, even though they know that all their players won't do it, some of their players will do it, and it will still be profitable, and it will still be worth doing. But there are players that want to get everything. We've talked about this before. I would like to get everything. I have no problem playing to get everything. But also, even if you are more hardcore than me, and I feel like I'm a pretty hardcore Pokemon Go player, is it actually reasonable to expect your players to have every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday free for two months straight? Because it's not like <laughs> it's not like this was the first month they've done this. We just yeah. came off of February where every weekend was an event, and they're now doing it again. I will give you Niantic's answer in two parts. Part the first, at least it's not eggs. Part sure. the second... <laughs> If it was Destiny and they had an event every weekend, you'd be sitting in your on your couch playing Destiny for hours until you got that event. So maybe game, bud. I don't know if that's a super fair comparison because when Darkrai starts or when Garatina starts or when Cabalion starts, I don't know where it's going to be exactly. And even if I go there, I don't know if other people. But the people game is will about going that. outside. Yeah, no, that's fine. And so if they would have said like, hey. Darkrai will be this Saturday from 11 to 2. I know that other players will be there. So this is the problem with the this past weekend with the clones. So they put Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur in five-star raids only for this weekend to celebrate Pokemon Day. And I was at a convention where there were gyms and there were plenty of Pokemon players around. And it was also very close to a park. A very big park with good spawns and and good and plenty of gyms to see. And I'll admit I wasn't I wasn't on the show floor a whole lot, but I was around the PAX area <laughs> going from meeting to meeting. <laughs> I can't say that I was actually, you know, walking between booths. But every time a four star raid popped, it was a Marowak. And that is that is actually the problem that I think is I am out and about and I and you're you're saying that these these three Pokemon are only available in four star raids for four days, yet you're continuing to promote Marowax or you know how many beauty fly raids I saw this weekend? Who's doing beauty fly? Like who's oh, being like those. Oh yeah, um, for one, yeah. sure. Three star beauty fly. I would like look, you know how many wormples I've hatched? I can get a beautiful. I can get a million beautiful fly right now. I'm, I'm swimming <laughs> in like two thousand Wurmple candy. That that's my frustration. That's why I was talking to you guys about like I want to do Darkrai. I'll do. I'll give Niantic twenty bucks. I'll do twenty Darkrai raids because I genuinely like Darkrai. I really do want to shiny hunt this one. This is like the first Pokemon in a long time where I was like I actually care about Darkrai shiny. But my whole worry is, uh, am I even going to see Darkrai raids? Because I yeah. couldn't, I didn't even see a single Venusaur all weekend. And this was going from 30 minutes from Forest Hill to downtown Boston. There's a two gyms and every single trade stop. I walked through the park both days. Not a single five, four-star Venusaur. I saw Charizards and I saw one Blastoise that I was able to do. But let me tell you, I saw at least 400 Beauty Flies and 50 Alolan Marowaks. I mean, I think that's more on the city of Boston than it is on Niantic. <laughs> Get good, Boston. Get good, Boston. Well, and right it, now, it, it goes back to the earlier conversation of Pokemon Go not being fair, which is fine. I accept yeah. that it's not a fair game, but man, I live in the, the 25th, 25th biggest city in the United States, Milwaukee. Very big. I don't have a problem seeing gyms from my house, seeing stops from my house. I can 15 minutes, I can be downtown Milwaukee. 15 minutes, I can be to one of the best parks in the Wisconsin area to play Pokemon Go. But man, when you're in like a city like Boston, it makes Milwaukee look like a joke when it comes to Pokemon Go. Like I was able to do so many Team Rocket stops consistently. I was able to just spin so many stops. Uh, and it does help that that city has really good public transport and that city 
has a lot of a his- history to it to make a lot of stops, but it just like I I just imagine being if I lived in Boston, I would have every single one of Giovanni's Pokemon. Heck, I would probably have two Shadow Entes by now, and it started today, um, just because of how many stops and how many Team Rocket things it is. So I I it made me appreciate that like I am lucky to be in the Milwaukee area and have good spawns and have good a good area to play Pokemon Go, but there are just cities that are significantly better for Pokemon Go. Yep. And there were plenty of gyms I can do, but they weren't the ones that Niantic was promoting. So again, this is this is my worry is like, okay, it's available for four days, but unless like us three and three other people, mm-hmm. we could do any Dark Cry raid. But we got we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to set aside time and drive to yeah. each one. Whereas from eleven to two, we're gonna put Dark Cry in every raid. Go yeah. where you feel comfortable. You don't have to coordinate with your friends. I mean, it's weird because the longer weekend opens up to more people, but the longer weekend also means you just have to be lucky. And or you have to have a raid group, which yeah. some people are very lucky to have one. Unfortunately, like I don't, but I mean, you guys like, do in M- Minnesota. Like you could, you two could. could easily get a raid group and and drive yeah. and find Dark Ride. I mean, there are a lot of gyms in downtown Minneapolis, and there's an entire group of people, all the business people, who head out into the skyways at noon and wander around to do all these things. Like, I can easily slide into that group and follow them around and, and jump in on all of these things. Like, it's... But again, I'd have, like, I have to give up my lunch hour to go do it and hope that in that time, like... Granted, there's a lot of options in downtown Minneapolis. There are a lot of gyms, but it is a matter of in that in that time period will we see any? Um, like as much as we say Mall of America is a good spot, they don't have a lot of gyms. They have like and, eight though. And I was thinking about yeah. that too. I was like, oh, do I just drop everything because I I genuinely enjoy Pokemon Go? And do I drive six hours to Minnesota this weekend to one hang out with you guys, which would be a hundred percent worth it? <laughs> But, like, what what is our plan of action? Okay, Greg and Will, uh, do you guys just want to sit at Mall of America for 10 hours? Because at least if a Darkrai <laughs> pops, we can do it, but we can't guarantee Darkrai is going to pop. And so the other option is, okay, we have to rope three more friends in, and we have to drive to Raid to Raid, which ideally should be fun, but it's also, hey, are you ready to drop your entire weekend to do this? Like I, yeah. I would because I'm passionate about Pokemon. Now repeat that for three more weeks. Yeah, <laughs> coming like, off of do, repeating I it for do. four weeks. Like I would have if I wasn't traveling, and like the three of us were in the city. I would be like, hey, Greg, Will, we can easily do Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise. The three of us. Let's do it until we each get one, and then we call it a weekend. But now repeat that every single week. Yeah. I mean, I could do it once. Like, if you really want to do Dark Cry, I would happily do it. But then the rest of the month is mine. Like, I do things on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> so, like, I only get I only get a weekend. Like, I do work a, a lot. Um, and so I can do it once a month without feeling bitter towards the game. Look, you guys complained about the eggs. Now you're complaining about the raids. What's next? Let's talk about... Uh, well, okay, yeah, we can talk about what's next. <laughs> what is next? Um, so from uh, so there's another mysterious event coming from Friday, March 20th to Monday, March 23rd. They don't sp- specifically say what it, what it is, uh, but it will feature more normal fire, water, electric, and ice Pokemon in the wild. Ninkada, Ninkada will also be available, so that's coming back. Uh, it will be appearing in the wild, hatching more from 5k eggs. If you're lucky, you can encounter a shiny one. Um, Carablast and Shelmet will be hatching from 5k eggs. One to four star raid battles will feature various bug and steel type Pokemon. Let's go back. We gotta go I back mean, to the chart to figure out what that lines up with. So, Cobalion it- Raid Weekend is Friday, March 20th. Through the 23rd. So not only is Cobalion happening that weekend, which is a week before the St. Louis event. A lot of people are going to. But we have Maybe. a mysterious event happening that weekend. 
I don't know if it, it, it like takes a rocket scientist to figure out or like m- maybe you skip Gen 5, fire, water, electric, ice, a bunch of bug type Pokemon spawning. I don't know. Probably Genesect that has four drives, one being fire, one being water, one being electric, one being ice. It's a bug type Pokemon. That's probably going to be like a repeat of the Regigigas event, but for Genesect that weekend. Or Shedinja. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's also like not a very mysterious weekend when it's right after the Vernal Equinox. Yeah. I mean, that, and, and that like, is something I'm looking forward to, right? Like, I thought the Regigigas event was good. I traveled for it. I went an hour south to do Regigigas because I wanted an indoor place with a lot of st- uh, gyms. I thought it turned out great. I thought it was worth the nine bucks or whatever. But that's another event on top of another event. Team Rocket is going to be taking over uh, this weekend, March 6th to March 9th, the same weekend as Darkrai. So Poison and Dark type Pokemon will be appearing in the wild. Absol will appear in the wild, uh, which sometimes well, they made Absol appear for a little bit and then they took him away. Uh, Skaroopy will be able to be shiny. And then on Saturday, March 7th, from 2 to 5, the Team Rocket global takeover will happen. Um, so there will be more Team Rocket stuff happening for the three hours. Shadow Pokemon rescued from the gym leaders have a chance of being shiny. Uh, Go gym leaders have switched up their Pokemon that they will be using. Uh, you will be able to get charged TMs to change your Shadow Pokemon's attack from frustration to other attacks. Uh, your music will be different in the game. Uh, does Darkrai spawn during these three hours? Like, what's happening? Like, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Like, that's I cool, don't know. but again, if I come up to do Darkrai on Saturday, are we just going to get three hours of no Darkrai? Which is actually the complaint I had of today's event of, cool, Gengar and Nidoran- Nidorino are in raids, but also this is one of the last days to get the clone Pokemon, and now I you've cut them for three hours. They already are hard to find, but now you've cut them completely for three hours, and I I can't see any of them. There's another event. Psychic Spectacular it's Returns. It's, it, it, if you weren't playing Pokemon Go, you'd feel like we were making these up. <laughs> From Friday the 27th to Monday the 30th, you can look forward to more Psychic Pokemon discovered in the Unova region. During the daytime, you'll be able to encounter encounter Solosis, which is the first time they're available in the game, and Gothita. Um, they will also be available in 5K Eggs. Psychic Pokemon like uh, Drowsy and Abra, Ralts, Spoink, Baltoy, Why Not, Beldum, Gothita, and Solosis will be hatching from eggs. Shiny Balto- Baltoy will be introduced. Uh, psychic type Pokemon will be featured in raids. You will see them more often. And there will be psychic type research available. Uh, Pokemon Spotlight Hour will be returning every Tuesday for the month of March. Pokemon uh, Mystery Bonus Hour will will be uh, happening every Thursday in the month of March, 6 p.m. for both those times, local time. And uh, your Community Day Pokemon, I believe, is Abra. Was that officially announced? Yeah, it was. But whatever weekend I didn't say. Sorry, I'm sure everyone was taking notes for this. Will be the community day weekend with Abra. And that's all of March. It's literally it's more than a full time job. It's way too much. Yeah. It's way too much. Like, I, and I, I think mean, of people who play World of Warcraft full time, you know, eight years, yeah. 40 hours a week or whatever. That's the only game they play. And I don't even think those games have that many events. <laughs> no. I mean, we're just, we're, we're about to do the ladies event in ff14 so there's that but it's like one a month the thing is is there's two ways to look at this the problem is that it hurts hardcore players because they have to do something all the time but the question is is would they do it anyways and i think on some of the like for me i just look at it and say i'm look i can't do this i'm just not right like you're just getting people to that or i could just skip it and it'll come around again like in some ways, it's building a healthier relationship with the game because it's so much that for a lot of people, you have no choice but to say, I can't, I can't give this more. 
I really can't. Especially, you know, when your Team Rocket mystery, your big mystery event weekend is coming out when Animal Crossing hits. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't even think about that. No, the Team Rocket one is this weekend. Are you saying the Genesect event is... Yeah, the mystery event weekend is because Animal Crossing hits the 20th of March. Well, if it's like the Reggie Gigas event, that takes that took me like two hours to complete. But they did give Those you a, an eight-hour window. Those people are not leaving their home. They are not leaving their homes. They have to sit at home and pick weeds. And pick fruit and, and travel to other people's islands to get their fruit so I can get all the fruit. Look, you got to just, this is just a, a strong push. You have to become a passive player like me yep. and just chill, Pokeball Plus, enjoy it that way. Complain about the hats. You're good to go. Word. I, I have, I, I've gotten to the point where I have no problem skipping, but... Pick and choose, I'm more baby. curious of, like, is this going to hurt the game? Because I have seen hardcore people, it, se it seemed like a lot of them were throwing in the towel this, this weekend when this news broke of, like, we just came off four weeks of constant yeah. stuff and you're hitting us with another four weeks. I think it will tell. Like, there's a couple ways to look at this. This is a desperate chance to try to get a dwindling populace back in the game. Or this is a how far can we push it just before we lose? I imagine if you're a new player players. and you're dying for content. Yeah, this is super exciting. It's probably great. It uh, It's hard to say. Like, there's so many people who would see this as a boon and there's so many people who would see it as, I Bust. hate this. Yeah, the, like... The other thing I think about, this is the last point, is like, does... Like, there is now, it feels like there is now an optimal time to play Pokemon Go where you get the most benefits. If they're going to do, hey, psychic type Pokemon are spawning more in the wild from Friday to Monday, and they're repeating that for four weeks, why even play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? And if you are going to play Tuesday, well, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, those are the Thursday, days that you go to your actual job. Right. <laughs> and then if you do play Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, why play when you know there's a better event happening yeah. at six, whether that's double Stardust, double XP, double candy, uh, you know, more spawns, higher shiny chance. Like, well, if I only have an hour to play on Tuesday, I'm going to try to make it at six because I, it's more beneficial for me. And if I only have, you know, 20 hours a week to play Pokemon go, why would I not save that till Friday, Saturday, Sunday? I don't know, like, that's, like, more of an interesting, like, not a problem, but, like, a thing I feel like they're setting up mentally. Um, I, Obviously, there's a small percentage that will play every day no matter what, but if you're trying to manage other video games and, I don't know, life, uh, you kind of have to plan for when you're going to be able to do stuff. Yep. We'll figure out the Dark Cry stuff. <laughs> okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Dark cry. Save all our questions of the week for the mega episode, the four hundred, and then we're just gonna. Do I have no voice anyways, so <laughs> we're gonna just do our Pokemon of the week and wrap it up. All right, Pokemon of the week. There, it's real quick, both sides. But um, start looking up the trivia for this one. Uh, basically, if you're a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon player and you played the Rescue Team versions of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, then you know that you take a quiz at the beginning and then that's what picks the uh, Pokemon that you uh, awaken as in the game because you wake up as a Pokemon. Um, and the questions that I selected, question and answer pairs that I selected for last week's Pokemon of the Week. Greg, did you do the research? It I brings did. you to... Machop. Machop, correct. <laughs> um. There's some weird things about it. Uh, basically, it's it's based on the nature. So the way that you answer the questions determines what nature uh, of Pokemon you are. Um, with Machop specifically, if you are all brave or have brave as the highest and uh, you are male, then that's when you get Machop. Super great Pokemon shuffle icon. FYI. Machop's a little cutie. I like yeah, Machop totes. a lot. It is... Uh... I feel like we've done much chop before. Probably. Macho chops. Macho chop. 
Uh, the only trivia is uh, in the English versions of before the English versions of Red and Blue, it was known as Karate. <laughs> That's cute. As its name. <laughs> so, what would the other ones have been then? Uh, isn't I think Machamp was it's like pre English name was like Judo or something like that. Oh, probably. Uh, if I remember my Machamp uh, trivia, it was yeah, Jew hyphen Do Judo. Cool. That's right. the only trivia. That's the only trivia. There's not a lot for my champ. Yeah. All right. So, uh, very very short Pokemon of the week this week. A little tougher. Um, for especially for people who only play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, you'll have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Here we go. Um, it's a poem again. I like to do poems occasionally. The name of the poem is Sunkern, the Gothcorn Prince. Sunkern, the Gothcorn Prince, has been dethroned. Who has taken the enviable spot of the Pokemon with the lowest combined stat total of all? Weep for the grass types. The usurper, when touched by mummy, will be unmoved, and yet the wandering spirit I have yet to see. Tales have stated it can take your multiform. Ground has taken a lesson from the ocean. Finally, who can tell when you start with one over level 20, over 25% HP, all of its friends come to the party. When they leave, are you sure yours stayed behind? The modern era so easily takes away. Young fish, you too may someday be unseated. There you go. There's your Pokemon of the week. Okay. When this episode goes up on YouTube or Reddit, if you have any questions for our 400th episode, feel free to comment on those and we'll collect them all up. YouTube is same as Twitter, same as Twitch, just PKMNCast, as always. Uh, and then and then if you are in the Slack, uh, we will ask those questions closer to the 400th episode, so hang tight on that. And then if you are looking forward to the voicemail thing that we're going to be doing, uh, we'll explain that next week. But we, yeah, we want to have just... Step away from the news for a full episode and just kind of focus on the people who listen to the show. That's our plan for episode 400. Yay. Greg is at White Wing on Twitter. Will is at Wash in the Sink. I am at Dragging a Lake. Twitter is PKMNCast now. Probably older episodes say Pokemon Podcast, but we got that Twitter handle updated. Match everything else. I expect now that Pokemon Day is over, fingers crossed that these episodes won't be pushing two and a half hours. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Good luck. A lot of Pokemon news to lead up of Pokemon Day. But we got a while until the DLC. Mystery Dungeon yeah. comes out soon. I don't know anything else coming. And I think all the Pokemon Go news is, has been out there. I think the only thing is they'll probably eventually reveal that that event is probably going to be Genesect. So, Yeah, it's Gen 5 time. So that is that. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you made it to the end, thank you. We will see you guys next week. This has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast, and we are super effective, super salty about Pokemon Go in March. This podcast is supported by our Patreon backers, and some of those people paid money to get their name read at the end of this show, starting with our producers Liam, Casey, Noah, Patrick, Jetsy, Alex, Matthew, Kay, Courtney, Catherine, Jeffrey, Sejanus, Kevin, and our executive producers of Anthony and Pancakes. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support the podcast as well, you can go over to patreon.com slash it's super effective, or you can head over to the easier to remember domain, ise.cash, literally ise.cash, super easy to remember. 
because money exchanges hands and ISC is short for the podcast. Uh, also, shout out to Nick, who does all the music for the show. And yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for making it to the end. This was new. Hey, it was different. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for supporting the show and listening. Really, really, truly appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Bye.